Hey YouTube, John here. Just want to go over something fast. I'm going to try to be as fast as I can in this video. Um, I've actually already recorded this about three times because every single time comes about over 20 minutes. So I'm going to really try to be fast with this. There's a lot of information. We're going to be talking about pickups and I want to get into talking about how what pickup to buy and what to look for in a pickup because like me, I know many of you have gone on a tone search and have spent probably hundreds of dollars on different pickups even more probably some of some pickups but even you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars on pickups that basically you just don't know what to look for you want to try something different and a lot of it is trial and error and and some of it you'll never be able to 100 percent know until you get the pickup and try it out and that's how it is a lot of times i mean i've i've have to admit i found some of my favorite pickups like that because it was a trial and error so before we get into what pickups to buy, I just want to give a quick, brief history. Long story short, and I'm not going to get into a full depth history, Fender came out, they came out with the Telecaster, because that was the first real, like, electric guitar, and they came out with the single coil. Now, single coils, they can be very noisy, they can be very buzzy, they have this thing called 60 cycle hum, which some people like it, some people don't. I think it depends on the guitar, and depends on the situation, it depends on also how much gain you use. If you're using clean to moderate, like a light crunch, then they're, the 60 cycle hum's not going to come out that bad. But then basically Gibson answered back with, which is technically a sim coil, but they answered back with the P90. Now P90s are really cool. They have kind of a nice growly but bright sound. Um, they're literally uh, a cross between, I feel like a cross between a humbucker and a sim coil. And long story short, you have your pole pieces, which are adjustable. On most single coils, the pole pieces are actually the magnets, but... On P90s and humbuckers, you have adjustable pull pieces, um, brass plate, and then you actually have inside here you have two different ma you have two magnets. I don't know if, how well you could see that because my camera is not focusing today. Um, you have two different magnets, and then underneath this black tape, you have a bunch of copper winding. Now Gibson, in the middle to later 50s, said we want to produce something with this type of sound um, without you know, without any of the hum, without any six cycle hum, then come in the humbucker. Now this one I've already pre-taken apart so that we can actually see what's inside the humbucker. So you have a cap, sometimes you don't have a cap, then you have two basically single coils. These are what I would, you know, basically a single coil would be. Single coil actually look closer to this, but this, um, these are not magnetized. The magnetism is coming from the magnet that's underneath. Then you got the adjustable pull pieces, underneath there as I pull them apart because that side pulls out and then that pulls out you have the well the Alnico this is an Alnico 2 magnet I put this in there specifically because I uh, wanted to do away with the ceramic magnet that was in there not that I don't like ceramics it's just I wanted a little bit different tone from it um, but the then you got the magnet and then you got the base plate with the conductor and there's all different ways people put conductors in um, this had a four conductor originally but I went to I wanted to go to a two conductor because I wanted to kind of uh, give a different little little chimier of a tone. Sometimes on Nico 2 can actually be a little bit um, brighter in a different way. Not like extremely bright, but brighter in a different way. So long story short, each pickup, each you know coil goes right on top. They get screwed in and the bottom with these little screws, they screw right in the bottom here. And long story short, take a screwdriver, screw it in and you're done. And that's what holds it together. It's really easy to change out different magnets. Um, so I'm gonna get into the path debate because there is a debate of a path style pickup. And to me and pickup builders, I'm not a pickup builder, I, I will be one day, I'm actually learning how to do it right now. Um, when I hear path style pickup, what that tells me is that you want a lower output pickup you want something that's going to be a little bit brighter a little bit clearer something that's not going to push your amp and also that tells me that you either want something that's maybe an alnico 5 or alnico 2 it depends back in the day there gibson was just kind of making the pickups that's something that you know people do need to know is that gibson kind of was making the pickups they put in in there whatever they wanted to put in there and the people are like oh these are the best sounding pickups they might have had an alnico 2 they may have had an alnico 5 we don't know um, it's really hard to tell what was in the original path pickups. You know, they could say, oh, we replicated these, but 
they're, you know, they just kind of wound the pickups. They didn't count how many wounds, they just wound them. And, and I hate to say it, 60% of the times they didn't sound that great, and 40% of the times they did sound amazing. So it's really hard to tell. Now, you have different kinds. You have El Nico 2, 3, 4, 5, I believe there's a 6, 8, 9, and I've heard rumors of a 12. I don't know if that's true. And then you have ceramic. Now, ceramic magnets are much thicker. I mean, if you could see the difference in the Al Nico 5 versus ceramic, they're actually right on top of each other right now. And you could see that there is a quite difference in the thickness between the two. It's also a little bit difference in the length, but that's another story. Um, the difference in the magnets, and this is an Al Nico 5. Al Nico stands for um, aluminum, um, nickel, and cobalt. Now, I'm sorry for anybody, aluminum is how I say alum aluminum, because I can't say it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound weird, I just I just can't say that word. So, it's aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, and the different combinations of the three will determine if it's an Alnico 5, Alnico 4, whatever it is. There is a difference in sound quality. Now, the difference in sound quality isn't the Alnico magnet itself, it's the strength of the Alnico magnet. So something like an Alnico 8 or an Alnico 5 will actually have a very strong pull. Um, believe it or not, Alnico 2 actually has a stronger pull than an Alnico 3 and an Alnico 4. Alnico 4 is considered something that sound like both an Alnico 2 and an Alnico 5 because Alnico 4 will have similar pull to an Alnico 2, but it also has, it, it, it's, it's really weird. I, um... As far as the pull but the different pull basically kind of gives it tonal characteristics so if you have something like a ceramic where it's going to have a really aggressive pull it that's how you get a more it kind of gives you more aggressive a little bit brighter of a sound now just to let you know there is differences between peak resistance kilo you know kilo ohms which is that k ohm thing that you see or or k sign that means kilo ohms after the pickup so if you have something that's like a 5k ohm or a 16k ohm that's just uh that's part of it and there's also a millivolt so there's three things to actually determine your output how the pickup may sound and everything else example Seymour Duncan does a thing called a custom line. And what it is, they have a custom, which comes with a ceramic, a custom custom, which is Alnico 2, and a custom 5, which is the Alnico 5. And then you can always put in a, which I have here, a Alnico 8 magnet into the custom series and get a different sound. How do I know this? I've owned all three pickups, and I currently own the custom 5, and I have actually tried it with the Alnico 8 magnet, um, just to kind of see how it sounds. As far as tone quality, there is a little bit of a difference in tonal quality, but I also want to take this for example. You got two pickups. I'm going to put two pickups in front of you. I'm going to put a Seymour Duncan JB and the Seymour Duncan Custom 5. Both of them have Al Nico 5 magnets. Now, you say, oh, they both have Al Nico 5 magnets. One's a 14K, one's a 16K. They're pretty similar, right? Wrong. They're actually pretty different. And it all depends on how the pickup is wound and how they're designing the pickup. Now, the custom series is designed as a path on steroids. So basically what that means is that it, it, people think that the path pickups a lot of times have more of a scoop in the mid-range. So with these path on steroids style pickups, they kind of scoop the mid-range a little bit. And then with the JB, it's actually very bumped in the mid-range. Um depending on what you're looking for you know i found it if i found that with sometimes more extreme music or amps that have a very bump in the mid big bump in the mid-range the um custom five actually helps um because it tames that mid-range a little bit whereas sometimes the jb is even better for that too because it cuts through nicely so Really what it comes down to is there's there's multiple things in pickup. Now, the reason why I'm saying what to what to look for in a pickup and how to buy a pickup is, is that I don't want you, you know, if you're a beginner or if you're an intermediate or even if you're an expert person, you're like, I really want to change the sound of my guitar and I don't know what to do. I want to think about different pickups, yada, yada, what do I do? And there, it comes a whole big thing and then there's different forms that say, oh, you should go with this pickup, you should go with that pickup, go with this pickup, go with that pickup. Every company has a little bit of a difference with their pickups. Example, 
Seymour Duncan JB has a very bumped mid-range and a, a, a little bit hotter of an output and so it can be a little bit warmer of a pickup. It sometimes it can have a little flubbier end, sometimes it can be a little bit harsh on the top end. But in general, the characteristic of a JB pickup is a very aggressive mid-range, um, good for like that me metal, chuggy type sound, even good for like, you know, a really like pushed rock sound. And, um, Things I don't like about the JV are sometimes it, it, it the, like I said, it can be a little bit flubby in the bottom end and it can be a little harsh in the top end. Not all the time, not every single JV I've ever tried. It, it really depends on the pickup, depends on the day, stuff like that. So what I did is I did some research and I actually found bare knuckle pickups. They have a nail bomb set, which sound absolutely phenomenal. They sound very similar to a JB and they have a better, more aggressive bump in the mid range. They're a little tighter in the bottom end so it takes care of that flubbiness and they're a little warmer in the top end so it takes care of that harshness. So basically it's not saying it's a, I don't want to say it's a better JB because I don't think, I don't know if, and, and I'm not endorsed by either company but I don't want Bare Knuckle to think, oh people are just going to think that you know, our nail bomb set is a better version of a JB and they, they don't, they might not want that hanging over their head. Maybe they're like, we want an aggressive sounding pickup that's a little warmer in the top end and really tight in the bottom end. That's what they might've been going for with the nail bomb. You know, they, the JB might have nothing to do with it, but I'm just saying to you, if you like certain qualities about the JB and you wanted something a little bit different, you know, maybe like I said, a little tighter bottom end, yada, yada, yada. Same thing I've said about a million times now. Um, maybe the nail bomb set is something to look for, but you know, there, there are people out there that say like, oh, you can't, you can only get so much better if you're only looking to get 10% better or, or just a smidgen better. It's not going to happen. It, it can happen. I, I just, you know, I, like I said, the perfect example was the JB versus a nail bomb or even the JB versus the, um, the I have the custom five over there. It's sitting over there. Maybe the JB versus the custom five, or even something like the Demarzio Tone Zone versus a JB. You know, those two are very similar pickups. Alnico five magnets. They both have a very aggressive mid range, but the JB has a little more top end, where the um, the Tone Zone has more of a bottom end to it. You know that those are things to think about. What I would really suggest is one looking at a website and what they say their tone chart is you know look what they say is 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 what they're kind of getting out of it if they're saying oh this is giving you a little more scooped in the mid-range and you're looking for something to bump your mid-range then you're probably not going to get the greatest you know out of it and also the second thing is contact the company maybe they because like i know some some companies like the um like DiMarzio and Seymour Duncan, and it's really helpful. They have these tone finder things, and it's really cool. And you can be like, oh, I want my guitar to be warmer. Or I want it to be brighter. Or I want it to be this or that. And they give you suggestions, but sometimes those suggestions aren't necessarily what you're looking for. Maybe they, when you put them in your guitar, it actually didn't do what you thought it was going to do. Um, you know, I've done that many times. I contacted the company and said, hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking to do. You know, this is the type of sound I'm going for. What would she suggest? And I even did that with uh, Bare Knuckle. And they sent me, they said the Nail Bomb. And, and that's actually the set I was looking at was the Nail Bomb. And I was like, okay, well, they suggested basically what I was looking at and what kind of, saw, you know, my eyes. So bought the Nail Bomb set and I love it, you know. So contacting company it's not the end of the world and it's i would suggest doing it before you pull the trigger because you might pull the trigger on a pickup and you may hate it and all of a sudden you're like crap i can't return it or i mean some companies nowadays are very nice and they're giving sometimes a 14 or 21 or even 30 day exchange program um and that's very kind of them and and they don't have to do that but they do that because they want to please you as the customer and you know you it's not like pickups or something that you can't just it's not like you can go to a store and try out every single kind of pickup. You know, you can't go to the store and always try out Seymour Duncan uh, Super Distortion or a, um, or even some like sometimes the more uh, different ends. Like, um, for example, I have a seven string guitar. I have EMGs in it, and not that they're bad pickups. I'm just not feeling the vibe of it. But I'm looking at some Demarzio seven string pickups. 
you know, I don't know. I've never really tried many DeMarzio seven string pickups. So I'm literally have to go contact the companies, look at what they say for sound and, and see, you know, based on a couple of the things that I was looking at, maybe these are the ones I'm looking for. You know, maybe they're not, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's even a different brand. So don't be afraid. Like I said, really look at what the, the brand's offering and don't be afraid to contact them. Okay. And the third thing that I would definitely suggest for anybody who's looking to get a new pickup, do not expect the pickup to be a do-it-all pickup. If you're trying to play metal and you buy something like a path-style pickup where it's going to be brighter and not saying you can't do that. I mean, I've done, I can play metal with the 59 Bloodline set that I got from RC Pickups, but I have gotten pickups from another brand that I really like their pickups. But when I tried to play the heavier chuggy chuggy stuff, they didn't really keep up as well. I'm not going to name that brand because I still think they're a great brand and I, I definitely think that they're a good brand. Um, and I, I definitely like the gentleman that who runs that company. You know, he's more of a mom and pop type company, but um, when it comes down to it, you know, the RC pickup is a similar set to the, the other company's pickup and the RC pickup, it can hold the bottom end and hold the chugging where the other company couldn't really do it as well. Um, but when you try to buy a one, one, one that's going to do it all, the one guitar that's going to do it all, the one amp that's going to do it all, you got to realize that's not the case. Sometimes that's not the case. You, you know, you may be able to find a pickup that could give you a great distortion tone and a great clean tone, but if you're trying to play country one night with that with that pickup, and then the next night you're trying to play extreme black death or whatever, you know, extreme metal, you may not be able to do that with that one type of pickup. And I don't mean to be rude, and 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 it is what it is, but sometimes that's how it goes. So those three things are are some of the biggest things look at the tone chart from the company contact the company and realize that you're not going to get one pickup that's going to do it all you may have to sacrifice one of your pickups like my i, I didn't have to sacrifice per se but my gibson that have the nail bombs in the neck pickup is my clean pickup every time i play clean i put the neck pickup on because it sounds great clean Distortion, it doesn't sound terrible, but it's it's great with leads and stuff, but rhythm wise it it's a little different, but with heavier gain it's 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 a little different, but that's different. Sorry, I, I'm not gonna cause I, I mostly play heavier distortion with the bridge. So when it comes down to it, if you're looking to get a clean sound, maybe do something a really low output in your neck pickup and use your neck pickup to be all your clean tone and then use your bridge pickup to be all your heavy gain tone so this video is kind of getting long i'm really sorry about that but hopefully this video helps anybody you know hopefully you know you might get suggestions from this video knowing that there are difference in magnets but also it all is based on how the pickup is wound and also hopefully it this video helps you realize that contacting company is actually a really good idea and it really can help so take care guys i will catch you back next week i hope you have a great week take care